Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Novich webinar episode number 170. In this week's episode, how Cube facilitates design. See how Cube works in a design workflow and how it integrates easily with the major software packages. Presenting this webinar today is Richard Lewis and with a few guest stars from the Pipeline FX team. Richard is one of the founders of Pipeline FX and an architectural design professional. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novedge. Novedge is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Put us to the test and come visit our webpage at novedge.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, pay a visit to the Novage blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up next week, getting started with Bluebeam Review 2015.5. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and it's being recorded live. If you want to rewatch this or any webinar episode in our collection, just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now, if you're all ready, I'm going to uh, share the screen with Richard. And so it will tell you all about Cube. Hi, Richard. Hi, Barbara. Thank you. Welcome. And good morning. So I'd like to start by kind of setting up what the, the problem that Pipeline Effects addresses um, of rendering in, in a design field. Um, I started in, in my architectural education using 3D computer graphics in the early 80s. And uh, this, was, this was the major problem at the time, and I still feel like it is uh, the thing that is holding back computer graphics. So I'd like to take you through this presentation real quick. I call it the four R's of computer graphics. So to start off with, our company's mission statement really is to help organizations minimize the burden of rendering in computer graphics work. There's no way to get rid of rendering um, just simply because we're always trying to improve the quality, the size there is of data sets, um, you know, the complexity of what we're looking at, and we're going to outstrip any type of GPU graphics card or real-time version of rendering. Uh, and that's always been true, and it always will be. So there's going to be rendering in computer graphics forever, and all we can really do is try to minimize that. So starting off with some facts that we all share as design professionals, all projects, no matter what kind, we have a timeline. They have to be finished at some point. You know, whether it's a movie that has a release date and a bunch of marketing spend, a commercial that needs to be aired, a building project that has this slab's got to be poured at some point, um, and students, they've got a semester to, to work on a project. You have your timeline. So we get started, everybody works really hard on it, and then we finish it. Well, that was true when we had pencils and T squares and clay and, and chipboard, but now we've got computers. So when we, we start these projects, we're all happy, lots of energy, working hard, and then we start to get nervous because things start to t get. Uh, to where they take a long time. So we really buckled down in design school when I was there. You just slept under the desk and stayed there. But in the end, there's all this quiet desperation because the problem is this work is creative. In creative work, you're never done until it has to be done because we can just keep improving it. So there's a process in creative work. In education, we talk about reading, writing, and arithmetic, but in computer graphics, we talk about reviewing our work, rethinking the work, redoing the work, and then re-rendering the project when we're uh, doing the project on a computer. So what happens over time is as we review, rethink, and redo, the re-rendering of things gets longer and longer and longer and takes more of this iterative process, uh, more of the cycle. And it's because these scenes get more complex, the characters get more detailed, the, the building projects get fleshed out, and the lighting is added, and more context, and things just take longer and longer. So kind of the manifesto of this is that the bottleneck in the creative iterative process of visual effects and 2D, 3D design work is rendering. We've got to wait until we can see it to talk about it. 
So the second problem is rendering is very complex. There are a lot of different software programs, a lot of different operating systems, and so many things going on with rendering. Um, these are quite complex tools. Now, whether you're a small, medium, or large architecture firm, pretty much everybody uses AutoCAD. Whether you're a small, small medium, or large visual effects studio, they use things. So the, if the organization size may be different, which keeps everyone dealing with the same level of complexity. So when we started our company, we realized that rendering was the bottleneck that needed to be addressed and that it was complex and so it required domain expertise in 3D visual effects and design. So all of the employees in our company come from visual videos and our developers around um, this 3D software. Now, and in manufacturing as well, things don't necessarily change quickly. Um, but when we look at the cost of computer graphics for design and manufacturing, you know, we're trying to do these high-level renderings and representations of what we're working on. Um, payroll is generally the biggest expense, but we have significant facilities and overhead expense. When we get into creative tools relative to the rest of it, it's not as much. A little bit more infrastructure to support those, but the management tools are the things that have been lacking. Um, Though we have all this stuff, how can we manage it uh, and maximize the use of it? So if we remember that rendering is the bottleneck in the creative iterative process of visual effects and 2D, 3D design work, uh, what can we do about that? We've got this timeline. We've got this re-rendering issue that just keeps getting longer. How do we reduce the amount of failed frames in our animations, trying to troubleshoot a render, um, clicking on things manually, and uh, just trying to reduce the amount of time that we spend rendering a project. How do we restore adequate time to review the things we're working on, to creatively think about it, to try to have a life, not staying till midnight waiting on things, and to keep the overall project quality high? So we, we answered that with something we called smart farming or intelligent render farm management. So there are lots of things that can queue up a job but we wanted to create something that um, would do as much as possible without human intervention to get those frames rendered. Uh, sorry about the automated timings. Let me take those off. There we go. And so our product is called Cube. Um, it's render management for digital media pipelines and 2D, 3D design. Uh, myself, John Burke, a software engineer. Michelle Ray will be speaking in sales operations. And Scott Morrissey, our project manager, is also on board. Do that. So we came from the... Uh, I had an IT company that was really Autodesk and Avid and uh, Alias and Wavefront software, and they attempted to do the first movie with real people, realistic looking people, cloth, hair, fur. Um, they had a big development team, wrote a lot of software. When that studio closed, we were able to buy the intellectual property and create a product that we now call Cube. Um, so in 86, this was a Unix-based system, and I modeled downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, and did a dissolved slideshow, 35-millimeter slides fly-through of uh, some zoning laws that would determine the future look of the And redraw that screen, it was a 24-bit graphic screen, took about 18 minutes. So 18 minutes between every time I reposition the camera to take another picture. So needless to say, I was there for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, things have sped up greatly since then, but that screen rendering of moving around this uh, data set was my biggest problem with and how many different scenarios I could explore within that semester. So today we're in our 14th year in business. 
Um, about 750 customers worldwide across a variety of industries. There's over 30,000 machines that are rendering, being managed by Cube. We have engineers between Hawaii and London across 11 time zones, and we provide both remote and on-site uh, render pipeline consulting globally. Some of our design customers you might know range from architects like John McCaslin and PBK Architects to um, automotive manufacturers, toy manufacturers, vacuum cleaner manufacturers, um, across the board of, of design. Film and visual effects names, South Park, believe it or not, is all in 3D, and they use a cut paper shader to make it look flat, but that's been rendered with um, our software for many years. Lots of the Game of Thrones uh, visual effects and lots of movies. We have about 200 universities and schools that are uh, using Cube to manage digital media education content. And real quick on our software, before we get into the product demo, the we have a central supervisor, and this was designed from the beginning to be a very scalable and fast render management system. And so having a traffic cop that instructs machines of what to do um, eliminates a lot of chatter between machines. So the machines draw uh, their scene files directly from storage and only have to communicate with the supervisor. Um, so we have an artist pool running a variety of applications. Administrators can manage. Uh, we license our software just based on the number of concurrent machines doing rendering. So the, the uh, application interfaces and the GUIs and all of that is unlicensed, so you can install it everywhere. run uh, in production over 30,000 cores, so we have a system that as you grow, you don't need to change render managers just because you need more horsepower. So at this time, I'd like to turn over the screen to John Burke, and he'll give a quick product demo. John, you're on. Your screen is visible and we are waiting to hear from you. You have to unmute your mic. John, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, here you are. Take it away. Yeah. Let me start over. Sorry about that. John, we still can't hear you. Um, maybe you can check your mic. It's it's on. Okay. Can you hear me? Good. Like, oh yeah, I can hear you. Yes, I can. I can hear you yeah. now. Interface for monitoring and documenting, checking your jobs. I can see that it's running, and um, it takes a bit for. John, your the sound is really, really low. So if you could speak a little bit more into your microphone. And probably this frame renders in about 20 seconds or so. So we will wait for the refresh and should see some more information in the logs. I put the red over here. About another 10 seconds or so, I should have a frame. Actually, two frames. Uh, prospect 25 and 75. And it looks like there's another CD utilization or something done. That's correct. And if I looked at my, pre I can look at my previews and I can look at frame 25 and frame 75. And that's submitting and rendering and debug. I'm going to demonstrate submitting a job to Cube from inside 3D Studio Max. I have a scene file loaded and the Cube menu. Cube. 
so we render and your face will show up. And because I'm rendering from inside or submitting from inside Max, it knows about the scene name, it knows the version, it knows the range right now. The scene frame is just at zero on this. So let's render frames 10 through 14. And then we'll have just the normal submit. And then I can step over to Cube Artist View. Max right now, and once the scene is loaded, it will um, get frame numbers from the supervisor, kind of like cards in the deck. And once all the frames have been rendered, only then will actually unload the uh, scene and uh, quit Max. So you only take the scene loaded at once. And I believe it is. Should we run the frame minute? See, it's still starting up. And those are all, there are all the five frames. And that's that. And if I go to my preview tab, I can see that I've got those there. And then I can browse out the directory. It'll take me to the directory with the files there. And I can look and see that frames 10 through 15. And um, then rendered at 11.27, we go. Okay, that's rendered from and submitting from inside 3D Studio Max. Okay, it appears we had some audio issues before. I'm going to uh, restart. Sorry about this. I'm going to demonstrate rendering from... I'm, I'm going to demonstrate rendering from... Render, submitting from inside VRAT. I have a scene loaded in VRAT. I step over to a web interface and I the submit button. This runs a task inside VRED so that it knows about all the, it knows the scene frame, it knows the version, it knows the frame range. And then I'm just going to tell it, I'd like to set of frames 1 and 2, which is the defaults inside VRED right now. I'm just going to say let's render frames 25 and 75. And I need to pick a viewpoint inside VRED. I'm going to use the home viewpoint and I'm going to click submit. And the job will start. I can come over to our artist view interface, which is the uh, end user's interface for monitoring and running and checking your jobs. I can see that it's running, and um, it takes a bit for VRED to get up and running itself. I can see here it's just started. I'm going to look at my CPU utilization as well to make sure that it's running. This isn't strictly necessary. I just use, use it to monitor for the demo purposes. And Probably this frame renders in about 20 seconds or so, so we will wait for a bit to refresh and we should see some more information in the logs. This is more output from Dread over here. And about another 10 seconds or so, I should have a frame. Actually, two frames. I'll have frames 25 and 75. And it looks like Judging by the CPU utilization, looks like I'm done. That's correct. And I, look at my pre I can look at my previews, and I can look at frame 25 and frame 75. Yeah. And I'm going to demonstrate submitting a job to queue from inside 3D Studio Max. I have a scene file loaded, and I have a cube menu. Cube. Submit render. An interface will show up, and because I'm rendering from inside or submitting from inside Max, it knows about the scene name, it knows the version, it knows my frame rate. Right now, the scene has a frame rate just at zero. I'm going to say, let's render frames 10 through 15, and I just need to click submit. And then I can step over to the cube artist view, and here's my job. You can see I've got 10 frames. The job that it's loading up. Max right now, and once the scene is loaded, it will then um, get frame numbers from the supervisor, kind of like cards on a deck. And once all the frame is rendered, only then will it actually um,
and there's only, there are only five frames, and that's that. And if I go to my preview tab, I can see that I've got a stair and then I can browse out the directory. It'll take me to the directory with the files there, and I can look and see that frames 10 through 15 have um, been rendered at 11.27. And I guess if we're going back to Richard at the moment. Okay, thanks, John. So a quick demo on a couple of design applications. I want to go over some of the uh, features of our software that uh, help designers manage 3D render pipelines. The, the first one is our dynamic frame allocation. And this came out of across many hundreds of machines with large files that may render quickly or they might take a long time, but trying to minimize the overall time for your 3D uh, applications like Max, like Maya, um, we do something where we launch the program in prompt mode on a machine doing rendering. We accept the scene file and the supervisor instructs the worker to just render one frame. And if that frame is quick, it'll ask for another frame. And if it takes two hours, it'll finish that frame and then see if there's any more left. And that way you don't need to manually try to send things to certain speed machines and uh, try to chunk jobs up into giving the fast machine 20 jobs and a slow machine five and trying to figure out how long it takes. The, the very fastest way to render 3D animation is to go all the way down to a single frame, spread your frames out across as many machines as you can, not reload the scene file, not reload the application, but just ask for the very next frame in the sequence as things get done. So the benefits are we automatically load balance across all of your computers. You can expand and contract the jobs. It reduces network traffic dramatically by only transferring that scene file once, um, which reduces disk system load, and you get your fastest throughput. Now, the software originally was an internal tool at Square, and we've worked for the last 14 years to make something that was very sophisticated and, uh, and only an internal tool into something a lot easier to use. Uh, and we've done that by building in a lot of uh, plugins and in-application submission interfaces. So your users are just sitting out of Max. Um, then they can open the GUI, our artist view GUI on the right, and manage their job and start to see thumbnails produced and see the estimated time before it's complete. Uh, we try to really reduce the amount of user error by populating the render dialog with as much information as the scene file can provide. We have a web interface as well for monitoring jobs. Um, in order not to be a security issue, there, you can't view any uh, frame data, but you can at least see if your job has started. You can, re you can stop it, pause it, kill it. And so on a campus, uh, over Wi-Fi, you can see what's going on uh, without having to have VPN access into the network um, just or just over the internet on your phone or iPad or web browser. We call that Cube Mobile View. We've also worked to create a little application that makes it easy to add desktops to your render farm. A lot of folks uh, in design don't use their desktops um, as much as they could. And this makes it a lot easier. So we have a concept of job slots, which can map to the number of CPU cores you have in a machine. And you can, by dragging the slider to the right, you can add or to the left subtract 
CPU cores or slots uh, to and from the render farm. If you go to a long lunch or meeting, you can give your whole machine to the farm. When you come back, you'll see what job it's rendering, how long it's been rendering, and uh, if it's a two and relock your machine to take back control of it, the supervisor will restart the job somewhere else. And now I'd like to move over to and introduce Michelle Ray uh, with Sales Operations. She's going to review our licensing and support offerings. Hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Sure, Michelle. You sound great. All right. Great. Thank you. So, PipelineFX offers several licensing options depending on the nature of your render pipeline and accounting practices. Your first option is Cube Designer Licensing. The Cube Designer License provides a complete render farm management system that is limited running one job or instance or slave per host or machine, if you will. This is a cost-effective solution for design firms whose primary content creation application limits their rendering to one job per host. Such applications would be 3D Studio Max, uh, Cinema 4D, or After Effects. And most architects, motion graphics, and broadcast graphics from this licensing option. The Cube Designer licensing costs US with a minimum starter pack of five workers. Now the starter pack is called the Cube Designer Base Package and it includes your first year of maintenance and support. Your second option is Cube Unlimited Licensing. Cube Unlimited provides a complete render farm management system as well, but it allows running multiple jobs or instances or slaves per machine. Now this is a better match for film or visual effects studios and most schools who run multiple render jobs on their workers or their rendering machines and they mix applications like Maya, V-Ray, Nuke, Arnold, or PR Man. The Cube Unlimited licensing costs US $300 per worker with a minimum starter pack of five workers. And the starter pack is called our Cube Unlimited Base Package and it also includes first year of maintenance and support. Now the only difference between Cube Designer and Cube Limited is not the functionality of the product, but Cube Designer allows one job per host and Cube Unlimited allows multiple jobs per host. And now our third option is Cube Subscription Licensing. So do you need to save cash? Or is your rendering demands growing? Do you need additional render power for maybe only one or two months? Then subscription licensing would be best for you. PipelineFX is the first company to offer render farm management on a month-to-month -month basis. And Cube Subscription Licensing is fully automated and available on demand by completing this online form on our secure website. Now to rent these Cube licenses, you can find the monthly subscription form on our pricing page. And the flexibility of paying month to month helps organizations ramp up to meet project demands or manage your cash flow and constrain budgets by paying for licenses only when they are needed. Cube subscription licensing costs US $15 per worker per month. Now just as we offer several licensing options, PipelineFX offers a multitude of consulting and training services to fit your needs. We have a quick start service, which is two hours of online consulting help. Um, the quick start provides you with an immediate way to get your cube trial up and running and costs US $500. We also offer jumpstart services, which are online and designed for deployments on a tight schedule. These are offered in four hour and eight hour blocks of time. A jumpstart provides you with a quick and immediate get up and rendering with Cube, as well as expert help with configuration and tuning for high performance. Again, at US $1,000. We also offer two training courses that are also online and on site. The first is the Cube Artist Workshop. This is a one day workshop geared towards artists and new users of Cube. The cost of the online artist workshop is currently 600 US dollars. The Cube Certified Administrator course or what we call the QCA class 
is a two-day certification training class with extensive hands-on lab time designed for technical support staff, IT personnel, as well as consultants. This QCA class is hosted by a customer or reseller almost quarterly in different regions of the world and which is offered for free. We have a training calendar on our website that you can refer to for these free hosted QCA classes. And last but not least, we also offer global consulting. Our consulting services are on site and for larger projects that require a statement of work to be completed with our expert support engineers. And prices may vary depending on time and needs of your project. Pipeline FX has just re uh, released our very own CubeTube and Pipeline FX University, where you will find helpful instructional videos about how to use Cube, as well as bi monthly public online demos of features and progress for upcoming release. And as a special thank you for attending our NoVeg webinar, we are offering each attendee a special Cube Designer Bundle now through October 31st when you purchase through NoVeg uh, website. This exclusive offer is only to you and the offer will expire on October 31st. It requires a minimum purchase of one Cube Designer Render Base Package, which is a US dollars of 500. And then with that purchase, you'll receive $1,100 in consulting services and training for free. The training and services include one free quick start and one free online cube artist workshop. So for more information or to request your free 30-day trial, please visit www.pipelinefx.com or if you have technical questions, you may email support directly at support at pipelinefx.com. And for pricing and queries, you may email sales at pipelinefx.com. Thank you for attending our webinar on how Cube facilitates design. Uh, Barbara? Yeah, thank you, Michelle. If you have any questions, this is the time for you to um, ask them. Just type them in uh, in uh, the question box. Otherwise, you know, I want to thank uh, all the Pipeline FX team for this presentation. I know there's been some sound um, trouble. I blame it all on the lunar eclipse. That's my story. Anyway, while we wait for the question, I'm going to transition to my screen to... Um, to say our final words. Um, I was uh, really intrigued by this um, software solution for um, render farmers. So, um, and they have a great offer. So get your hands on Cube right now. Just, you know, visit Novage and we'll take care of it. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. And I want to remind everybody that if you want to um, uh, check out Pipeline FX and Cube, uh, this is where you find it, nanovage.com. And our next webinar will be um, on um, Bluebeam Review 2015. And uh, to rewatch today's webinar or previous one, check out our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channels. Our webinar playlist as webinars for every software ta taste. Thanks again. Oh, I have a question now. Okay. So, uh, Michelle, if you're still there, or Richard, uh, would you like to answer um, this question uh, from Daziano Smith? I have three render nodes, and I'm the only rendering guy in the office. Do I have to purchase a minimum of five users? Who wants to take this question? Richard, can anybody hear me? This webinar has um, had some trouble.